wonderful song. There's a lot of uh, festivals of love there. This, of course, uh, Pep. Our second interview, we're looking at uh, African of course, de economic development, and we're looking at that starting right now. There have been several opportunities to grow the relationship between African nations and other parts of the world. Well, one organization that has performed tremendously well in this regard is the African Heritage Foundation, which has worked tirelessly, especially to bridge the gap between Africa and the United States. Well, this was achieved through various activities in the United States and African nations, such as conventions and conferences, for example, the U.S.-Africa Conference and Expo, and a project called Africa Village. Well, led by Ambassador Tunde Ade Tunji, the African Heritage Foundation believes that Africa does not need aid, but has enough potentials if there is sustainable investment. Now, to Ambassador Ade Tunji, African nations and the United States need each other through the influence of trade, technology, transfer, and of course, investment and job opportunity, bring in human resource and bilateral joint education system. Well, we will be hosting Ambassador Aditunji this Friday on Kakaki, the African Voice, and we will be discussing his vision and how to bridge the gap and build the Africa for sustainable development. Ambassador Aditunji is an accomplished art historian, curator, journalist, and as well as a publisher. Well, he has won numerous awards such as the Nigerian National Media Merit Award, an Africa Best Image Maker and Cultural Ambassador, City of Atlanta um, Phoenix Award. Well, we welcome Tunde Aditunji. You're welcome, sir. It's good to have you here. It's Thank you so you much for hosting me. <laughs> but before we begin the interview, we would like to tell you that our guest is also one of the prime movers of the Nelson Mandela Day in the state of Georgia, where he joined other legislators to declare the day. Let's take a look. Celebrate the life and times of a great international leader, not just an African leader, but he changed the lives of people all over the world, none other than Nelson Mandela. What we dream about in 1996 to bring the indigenous, the intimate, and the distant Africans together and create the sixth region of Africa, making the state of Georgia and the city of Atlanta the epicenter and the gateway is already happening. Well, thank you for staying with us. I'm sure you watched that, and I'm so proud of you. Well, that, that is great to have such an ambassador represent Nigeria at the beginning. So, Wigley, tell us, how did you feel being a part of the movers of the Nelson Mandela Day in Georgia? Great. Let me begin by saying, hope defied, make the mind sick. When the desire are met, it's a tree of life. Vision is greater than ambition. Um, apart from Nelson Mandela, the first assignment I dedicated myself to is to bridge the gap and build the bridge mm -hmm. between the indigenous, the intimate, and the distant Africans all over. Turn your passion to purpose. I'm so glad that we are speaking again today at AIT Television, mm -hmm. of which an establishment I will ever, ever be proud of. Thank because you. dedication, persisting, commitment, prayer is the only antidote if you want to make a mark in life. Your CEO, I happen to know him, Ray Power, FM, Johnson Onine is a great guy who met with me. Mm -hmm. I left the shore of Nigeria in 1996. I don't go for greener pasture. I want to create my own greener pasture, create my own universe. Tell the world that in Africa you are sidelined is now the ma is now the future and it matters to the world. Okay. How do we do it? Taking the celebrate Africa journey through the ages to America and now narrating how the entire African nation from the bygone empires and kingdom gained their independence and now become the continent of possibilities is actually what now creates an invaluable opportunity now that everybody in the world can now see Africa as the emerging market and the antidote to the world economy. So that's exactly set the pace in 1996. 
I look at myself one way or the other that the opportunity I have to have been the train the trainer is here. Work in 110 cities in 57 countries. I live in Switzerland and now create an environment and, and a, a viable opportunity in the 26 cantons of Switzerland. Talking of St. Maurice, Arosa, Davos, Davos Plaza, St. Margaretin, Zoloton, Lausanne, Lugano, Geneva. At one time I said, Where? Where? What do I do? Nelson Mandela has a dream. Martin Luther King has a dream. Steve Jobs, all these people, Microsoft, they have a dream. My dream is now to take Africa to the pinnacle. I want to become the number one image maker for Africa. Are you going to, you want to be a politician? No. If you only think of how you can make other people more successful, successful in their life, you become more successful. That's exactly what I watch today. Your chairman makes many people successful. He's so more successful. And uh, now, going back to the basic and what the question you are, I just use that one to now sanitize, sanitize and bring the court to the table of discussion because we have forums here coming to Africa now. Having discovered the world during the Olympics and having made the people of the world to now focus attention on, on, on Africa, it became an assignment to me now to take this to the nose and corners of the world and we create an viable opportunity in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, Atlanta became the mecca. It is African that make Atlanta. It is African that make Georgia. We have the international airport. Delta Airlines is flying from Hartford Jackson Airport now to Mutala Muhammad Airport. They failed in long time to come. And we were begging them. But now they are taking, they, are, they tasted millions and billions. Now, Africa become their now number one route. Now what we have taken to the core of the international community is economy, health and preventive initiative, culture and tourism, human resources and capacity building. Now we want to turn the brain drain into brain game. Most of the Africans living abroad, they are the master, they are the guru, they are the one dictating the place. But why is Africa who needs their own particular contribution is not getting it. This is my assignment. And this is what I have come now. For the past 27 years, I'm now delivering to African nations that we don't need to look for greener pasture anywhere. We don't need to look for experts anywhere. We already acquire the experts. So I want to beg the people of our great nations who have resources use it wisely those who are stealing money those who are making amassing wealth you cannot get any 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 legacy until when you create an opportunity for other people let us make this country great let's make africa great i have five millions today tweeting africa matters africa is the future that's the slogan everywhere mm -hmm. i get an invitation to speak now I'm writing my book. I now broadcast television for Africa in Atlanta. That is exactly going to take over from CNN because they already told me this is a great vision. So I'm bringing to you now, my brothers and sisters. That's why I started hope deferred, make the mind sick. When the desire I met is entirely a tree of life. All right. Now, wh why, when you look at Africa, you've spoken quite extensively about the economy and a lot of things that we need here. And, you know, going back to what we said earlier, you said that Africa is one country that is not supposed to be dependent on aid from Western countries. Now, you, you look at Africa, as some would call her, as a developing country. And then you look at, you know, Africa and industrialization. How can Africa and United States make gain of this relationship? Good. Good question. The President Obama went on a straight voyage of discovery to Africa and visited Senegal, he visited Tanzania, he visited South Africa. He did not come to Nigeria, he didn't go to Kenya. He said, United States needs Africa and Africa needs United States of America. China took a trip to Africa, they sneaked to Africa and they saw enormous wealth. Now they control the economy of the world. 
the indebted United States of America. United States is a country that has all the configuration of all the people of the world. We have the Chinese American, we have the Asian, we have the uh, Mexican American, we have African American, we have people all over. If a country like United States is indebted, then the world has a problem. That's the message that the President of the United States got. I said, we need Africa right now. We need Africa right now. We cannot play with Africa. The summit that took, uh, took place about three or four weeks ago in Washington, when he hosted the leaders of Africa, we dream about this as far back as 1996. At one time or the other, the United States will now carry Africa like this. And that's what is happening. So talking about the economy, the potential of the world is in Africa. We have everything that goes on well for us, but we lack human resources and capacity building. And that's the missing link. But we have our people. I hosted Jinping, the chairman of the African Union Commission in, 20, in 2011, and we took a trip to CDC. Then Dr. Freedom was telling me that, you know, you people from Africa, you are great. So tell me what. What is it? He said, you know, the best in it, the scientists we have today is from Cameroon. That, I don't even know where Cameroon is, but when this guy came, I was doing this, and then, where is your country? Where are you from? Where are you from? We have Nigeria in the NASA today. We have all of them scattered all over the world. In my data, in the, at the center, I run about 50 universities now that we have students that are coming all over from all the Francophone, the Anglophone, the Lusophone, the Italian, the German control country, they are now coming to study. And when they do that, they become the best. So talking about the economy, when we have all these human resources and capacity, we have power, human manpower scattered all over the world. Why don't we lure them? Why don't we invite them now to come over and see what is actually, the, what they need to do to Africa? There must be an agent of change. Change is the only constant thing in life. Growth is a recession. An opportunity is an agent of change. But procrastination is a great enemy of change. That's why I do not procrastinate when I see the opportunity. Yes, go over there. Be an ambassador. Talk to these folks. When I go to any country, they want to listen to me. So you are not a politician, but you are a realist. You are a potential man that wants us to. Then we are all coming back to Africa. Now, going back to what you said, this is what we're launching at the UN, which I moderated. Africa solutions to Africa problems. We got all the ambassadors of, of all the countries to come over. Tell us your problem. What's it? Now we are now going to each of the country that has this problem. We're done with Rwanda. After the genocide, we went to Addis Ababa. We got all the women that are weaving baskets. They are now looking. They are not looking for money. They are not. They are now industrious. We come into Nigeria. 2015 is our year of celebration. When this country will be greater than before, I tell you. And they, by now, it is now for us now to institute this particular opportunity and let the people that will now embrace this country both here, near, and there, far, to now embrace it and make it happen. So I think our economy is on course. Okay, um, Ambassador, you've traveled to over 110 countries, um, cities, and 56 countries. Yes. You're widely, um, widely interacted widely with um, the uh, UN, UN officials, top government uh, officials, expatriates, and, and also what exactly, when you rate, uh, if you are to rate Nigeria and its relationship with other countries, for instance, U.S. and, and China, um, which of these countries do you think Nigeria is better off with, Nigeria? Well, um, Nigeria is better off to, to all the countries. Every country has problems. But no, but no country wants to take its own problem to see the cases. They always make sure they promote the best of what is happening in the country. Nigeria is a country that has a lot of brighter future. Nigeria is great. We have potential. We have people. But Nigeria has rulers. We don't have leaders. 
how do we transform our rulers to be leaders? This is where we are going to solve all the problems. When we get leaders, then Nigeria is on course. And that's exactly what we need to work on right now. Okay, I asked this question. Because yes. When once upon a time there was a scramble for Africa, talking yes. about coloni uh, colonization and, yes. and all. And, but now what we have is countries scrambling for, um, for Africa to invest in uh, in different countries on the continent. Now, when you look at um, China yes. and the kind of investment it has in Africa, yes. you begin to see that it has um, a sort of competition yes. with the United States, talking about America. Right. Now, which of these countries, um, China or America, do you think Nigeria will better um, develop its economy best? Yes, that is a very diplomatic question. But I will answer it dip diplomatically. <laughs> China came to Africa and saw a lot of resources. Then the tendency is to dangle the carrot. They build roads for all, they build hospitals. Underneath that, they know what they are doing. They built 200 uh, million sectarian for African Union in Addis Ababa, where I broadcasted and I saw, and they donated the key to them. Underneath that, they want all our economy. But what is actually becoming the paradox is that China is not training our people. China is eroding most of what we have and now making it to make their own economy. We are not going to benefit in that on the long run. On the short run, it's okay. They be road for us. But they are not training us. If you could bring a cook in China to come and do some of the job here, and uh, the Akara that we use for hot palm, what is the, what, what concerns uh, China to be friend of and Akara? Yeah. What concerns China to be? These are some of the things we want to encourage our own people, our own creative ideas. Yeah. Now they see this thing, this is created in Nigeria. To give me a sample, the, the next year, next two months or three months, they bring a container, taking people out of job. That's China for you there. But we, know we, should not be, we should not feel shy to, uh, to look into all this because it's going to bounce back to our future. Now for America, we have the African Americans. I told you, people of the world make America. Everybody that is living in America now becomes the diaspora. That's why we create the sixth region of Africa. Africa with West Africa, East Africa, South Africa, Central Africa, North Africa, five regions. The sixth region is the diaspora. That is where the answer is right now. Those are the people that will develop Africa right away. That's why this is very necessary. China is playing its own part, but the diaspora is going to take over. All right. Okay, just, just before we go, I know that by 2015, there will be 5% increase in the African economy. But a lot of people are worried that it does not translate to broad-based development yes. and job creation. Yes. Now, African Heritage Foundation, what events are you bringing to fore to help with all of this quagmire and perhaps bring resolutions to African leaders? That's a great question. African Heritage Foundation want to brand Africa in the area of economic propensity. Now, first of all, we started with education. Now, we're bringing students all over from Africa to study now. Now, we've created an opportunity for them now to be self-sufficient, to create jobs opportunity. They are coming back to Africa now, create incentives. They're creating jobs. Now, we have exchange program. You talk about African village. The African village is a configuration of the 55 nations of Africa. I got endorsement in 2007 from EU already. That's about $21 billion project that will be cited in all the five regions of Africa, and the center is in the United States. We want to brand Africa. Ghana, come and display what Ghana wants to be. South Africa, come and display what South Africa wants to be. Nigeria, display what South Nigeria wants to be. Who are the investors? World Bank, each of the countries in Africa, the multi-billions companies, they will create that, that constant jobs opportunity. The derivation of all this economic power is, coming to is going to shift to Africa. That is the dream. That is exactly the, the epoch of what we are doing. Now you talk about the Nelson Mandela Institute. I don't want to shy away from your question. Every year, December 15, we create the Institute of Leadership 
policy and strategic studies. We're going to work in collaboration with NIPS. I was a student of NIPS in 1997. I was called from Atlanta to receive the National Merit Award presented by Dr. Walter Ofonaguro, then went to NIPS. That's the core that we now brand and you translate to jobs opportunity. I think these are some of the forums that we are. I mentioned brain drain, turning brain drain into brain gain. That will create opportunity for us in order to see our economy going straight to the zenith of his calling. All right. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Wow. in giving us a lot of insight about Africa's relations with um, America and the rest of the world. Sure. So sure. thank you. I, I think a lot of people might not have seen, you know, China in that light, but I think you've just given mm -hmm. an expose and perhaps people will begin to think carefully, you know, and look at how to create jobs for more people at home than giving a platform for people to come and take it. Thank you, Ambassador Ditton mm -hmm. It's a privilege having you. Thank you so much for this program. I really enjoy you, and I want to thank you so much for the job you're doing. Thank we are you. very impressed and encouraged. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. The privilege is ours. Well, this is the time where we draw the plot and call. It's, it's the Friday edition and the weekend edition, so we say have a fabulous Friday, and I say to you, be each other and one another's keeper. My name is Adora Oyechere. And I am Salamatu Ibrahim. Enjoy your weekend, and please join the program again on Monday.